And in honor of our 40th season, it is time for another Lawmakers Flashback. Tonight, after some technical wrangling between the House and the Senate, the bill that created Martin Luther King Jr. Day as a state holiday clears both chambers in 1984. There has been much debate in both the Senate and the House concerning the Martin Luther King Jr. state holiday. So that, is it not true then that that is my problem with this bill because we have an open-ended or an open door to a great number of potential holidays only declared by the president or by the governor? If, if the gentleman from the 139th would listen very carefully, as president written by law, code section 1-4, it states, any day pro proclaim or designated by the governor of this state or the president of the United States of the day of fasting or prayer or other religious services or observance. In code section 1-4-2, the days to be declared, treated, and considered as religious holidays shall be the first day of each week called Sunday. That's, it, that's the present law. We're not doing anything but putting it back just like it was. It's the present law. All those in favor will vote their own machine aye. Those opposed will vote their own machine no. One machine per person, please. The clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? The gentleman's motion, the ayes are 88, the nays are 55. The gentleman's motion, having failed to receive the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore lost. I give it the longest count since the Dempsey Tooney fight to gentlemen, 90 seconds. That's the longest one we've had in two years. After the Senate's amendment restoring the governor's power to create days of fasting and prayer failed in the House, the Senate receded from its position, clearing the way for final passage of the bill. SB 372 allowed the governor to proclaim Martin Luther King Jr. Day a state holiday. This has been a lawmaker's flashback.